In this video, we are looking at species and taxonomy. Okay, so what is a species? Well, a species are organisms um, that can breed or interbreed to produce fertile offspring. Okay, and a taxonomy means putting things into groups uh, or taxons, but I'm going to demonstrate that with a, like a family tree later on. So something we need to know in this part of the course is about courtship behavior. Well, courtship behavior basically increases the chance of successful mating because of a few reasons. We've got recognition of the same species. Only the same species will have the same courtship behavior. Again, it will stimulate the release of gametes. It will mean that you can recognize the opposite sex or gender. And it also indicates that they're sexually mature. And examples of this are like crickets have a specific song or uh, we can some release pheromones, fireflies have a special light pattern, cricket song, or there's, um, the, I'm going to put the dance of the birds of paradise, which are amazing. I'd recommend looking at them on YouTube, birds of paradise. Another definition that we need to know is phylogenetic classification. Well, this is classification, arranging them into species or into groups according to their evolutionary relatedness. This basically becomes a, a family tree. And a family tree is actually a hierarchy, and we actually need to know a definition of a hierarchy. So a hierarchy puts small groups into bigger groups, and there's no overlap between groups. So if we look at a family tree, Going way back, you might have one part of the family, have three children on this side, two children on this side. So each of these different stages is what we call a taxon or taxa for plural. So it would be like each generation. So each group is within another group, but there's no overlap. They can't be in this one and this one because it's generational. So these are, so this is a taxon. It's effectively a level in the hierarchy. Okay, so the, the, uh, the system that we use for classifying all organisms goes a little bit something like this. We have domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And in fact, I'm going to give myself a bit more room and do that again, because I've got a mnemonic for this, but I recommend you always make up your own mnemonic if you can, because it will be more resonant to you. But this actually stands for domain, Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, or genus, and species. So my acronym for this, I'll change color, make this black. So dominant, kinky people can often find good sex. An example for humans, we are domain eukarya. We are kingdom animalia. We are phylum chordata, we have a backbone, we are a chordate. And then class, we are mammalia, so we're mammals. Order, we are primates. Family, we are hominidae. The genus is homo, and the species is sapiens. We use something what we call the binomial naming system for naming species. This was Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish well, botanist mostly, and he came up with this system. There's often many common names. So a daisy might have be called something else in another part of the world. So where there's a universal scientific name, boa constrictor is the only one that's common name and scientific name is actually the same. And so homo sapiens will be, what color shall I go with? I'll stick with green. Homo, this is going to be a capital. And this is the genus. This is going to be sapiens, man the thinker not doing a very good job of thinking. Okay, so if you're handwriting this, technically um, it should probably be underlined or in italics. Whenever you see it in textbooks, it will be in italics or it will be underlined. And so homo is the genus, so the capital letter is always going to be the genus, and the second one is going to be the species. There's a story about a hippo, 
And a taxonomist will group a hippo with the things that look similar to a hippo, which and things it's fairly close related to, so pigs and antelope. However, if I ask you the question, what's the closest living relation to the hippo? Have a think about that. And I'm going to do a little bit on phylogenetics, and I'll tell you the answer at the end. So phylogenetics, we can use two different ways to derive how closely related things are. So we can use genome sequencing. So genome sequencing, basically, you're going to compare the order of the base sequences of the whole genome. You're going to pair in the, or the order of A, T, C's, and G's. And you're going to see the higher the percentage match, the more closely related they are. So you might have heard that humans and chimps share 96% of their DNA, 98% sometimes, 94% sometimes. It's a bit of a work in progress, but... Yeah, I'm going to put 96%. I wrote an essay at university for my final exams on humans are 98% chimpanzee. Discuss was more or less the question. Fortunately, I managed to remember some stuff about it. I hadn't revised it at all. Um, and then the, another thing we can do to compare is immunology. So immunology, basically, this tells us that DNA, if we just did a bit of a recap, DNA codes for RNA. I suppose messenger RNA, if we're being accurate. And messenger RNA codes for amino acids. And amino acids fold up into proteins. The difficulty with genome sequences is you've got to basically look right inside all the DNA. It's very costly and expensive. But if we actually, we can use the proteins as an indicator of what the DNA is telling us. So the tertiary structure of a protein basically tells us about the sequence of DNA. So we can see whether antibodies are going to form antibody antigen complexes with thing of antibodies from one species with antigens of another species. So if the same antibodies bind to a, to a species protein, then we know it's pretty closely related. So in diagram form, I suppose we've got three individuals, A, B, and C. I'm just going to squeeze this in. Let's say that a has, this is their protein, I'm going to do C with the same shape, and B, what am I going to do, B as, B can be a curve, and so this one is going to bind onto a triangular shaped antigen, triangular shaped antibody antigen complex, and this one's not going to, because we've got a triangle on the end of our antibody, and the, the protein doesn't match, so we know that a and, a and C are more closely related to one another than they are to B. And the answer about the hippo riddle, well, hippos are most closely related to the baleen whales. They divided off from in the southern Pakistan, or what's now southern Pakistan, uh, the Cretaceous tertiary boundary about 65 million years ago. So what's most interesting is the hippo is more closely related to the whale than it is to the pigs and the other ungulates, which are its family.